All right, grab your Bibles and turn to Psalm 1. Psalm 1. The first Psalm, the first book of Psalm. Don't be seated just yet. Stay standing if you're able. We're going to read the Word. You can be able to sit down in just a few moments for the rest of the sermon of the message of the Word. Psalm 1, it says, Blessed, verse 1, is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I want to talk about the power of living a blessed life. You can be seated. Tell your neighbor, there's power in living a blessed life. Tell them on the other side, there's power in living the blessed life. I like living my kind of life. I'm living a blessed life. I like living this kind of life. I'm living a blessed life. I'm blessed when I come and when I go. I'm living a blessed life. You don't know what it is to live a blessed life till you've lived a blessed life. You don't know how wonderful the blessed life is until you experience it. Some people think they're living a blessed life. They think their life is fabulous, but they don't really know how good it is until they've tasted the blessed life. And I want to talk about that today because ultimately God's desire, according to Psalm 1, is that God wants us to have a blessed life. The word blessed means to be happy. Somebody say happy, happy. It's not the happiness that the world offers. The world offers a happiness that fades away, comes and goes. The happiness that the world offers is conditional. It's based on what's going on in your life. It's based, it's based on conditions, external conditions. But the scripture says here that God wants to bless us and give us a blessed life. Happy is the man who is having a blessed life, has happy. And then he begins to give us and walk us through this sixth psalm, and that, this first psalm, these six verses, and that's what I want to do. I want to go and look at these six verses and, and, and see what insight it gives us because I've discovered that a lot of people are longing for and hungering for the blessed life. Now, he begins by giving us point one, principles. Somebody say principles. He gives us the principle in verse one of the blessed life. Allow me to talk in just a few moments and talk about the principle, the principle that he wants us to have. Here it is right here, verse one. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. That first verse lays out the principle. And here's what the principles are. He's telling us, I got some sub points to the first point. Sub point, he tells us to be the blessed man, you have to first of all, the principle says, watch where you walk. Somebody say, watch where you walk. Tell your neighbor, walk, watch where you walk. As a matter of fact, he is saying, here's what he says, the man will be blessed who has watched where he's walked and he's not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. Y'all walk with me through this because this will change your life. This is life transforming. It changed my life. He says, blessed is the man who's made a choice, who's discerned and watched and observed, and he is not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. He is not walking. That word walk means a course of life, a way that you're living your life. He says that man who is not listening to the advice or the counsel of the ungodly person, the sinner, the morally wrong bad person. Here's the problem that a lot of people have. You are taking counsel from people who don't know what, who don't know what they're talking about. That's problematic when you are getting advice on your finances from somebody who done filed bankruptcy two or three times. It's problematic when you're getting counsel from your, for your marriage from somebody who ain't never been married. Go ahead, look at your neighbor and say, 
It's problematic, though, if you're going to give counsel from somebody for your marriage and they done married three or four times. If you're going to get counsel, find somebody who show, who can demonstrate, who has demonstrated that they know how to manage their money or they know how to make their marriage work. Whatever it is you need, find somebody who knows how to do it. Y'all are making mistakes. We are making mistakes by listening to people who do not know what the heck, and I feel like saying something else right there, they are talking about. Can I get an amen right there from anybody? And the writer here in Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man who's not listening to the counsel of ungodly people. Not listening to the advice, the suggestions, the direction of somebody who has not shown success or that they know how to do it themselves. Blessed is the man who, 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 who is watching where he walks. But hold up, he doesn't say just that. He says right here, also, nor stands in the paths of sinners. He says not only watch where you walk, but watch where you stand. What does that mean? Well, Y'all not gonna like this point right here. Because the word stand means to be connected to or hooked to. He says the man's gonna be blessed who's not hooked in the path of sinners. See, some of y'all have been so connected, hooked, bound to sinners that whatever they do, you don't have enough courage to say, I'm not doing it. You don't, you don't have enough courage, this is why your life ain't blessed, you don't have enough courage to tell them, no, I'm not going to the club. I'm done with that, my life is over. If y'all all say amen together, nobody know I'm talking about you. Because I know this is the club crowd. Y'all might as well come on and say, I'm sorry. It's not the club no more, just the lounge crowd, just the lounge crowd. But you gotta have enough courage, you have enough, to have enough fortitude, enough insight to recognize that nothing good ever came from you hanging out in the path of where the sinners go. You ain't gonna get a word from the Lord at the club or at the lounge hanging out with sinners. You ain't gonna get it at the party. You ain't gonna get it there. You want life, you want joy, you want peace, you want everything that God has for you, but you keep staying connected and hooked to people who don't even know God. He says that you don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Somebody say, sit in the seat of the scornful. There it is right there, it's in the text right there. That means you don't dwell, remain, settle with, hold up, if you look up sit, sit in the Hebrew, it means get married to. Scornful people, you don't sit in the seat of those who are scornful. And the word scornful means to make fun of, to mouth at. You see, I, I, I think a part of the problem is y'all are hanging out with people you're interested in, you are loving on, you are engaged to people who talk bad about God and talk bad about Jesus and talk bad about church. But hold on, okay, I, I know you're saying, hold up, I know you're saying, well, we're the single people, all the single people, we're all the single people. Let me see all the single people, single people. Stand up for a minute, let me see all the single people. I'm say, just stand up, stand up. Don't be ashamed, don't be afraid. What y'all scared of? What y'all scared about? Come on, single people, if y'all single. All right, I just wanna see who you are. I wanna know who I'm talking to. Look, y'all got an attitude. Y'all standing up with an attitude. Sit down, just sit, sit your, sit down. I'm trying to help you out. I want to give you some advice. I want to make a suggestion to you that you need to be careful about hanging out with people who are scornful about the things of God. And by the way, single paid people, single ladies, just because he go to church don't mean that he's a Christian. One Sunday, one day, one week, a day, one, one day a week does not make a Christian. I, I, I want to know not what he do on Sunday, but what does he do the rest of the week? Is there evidence in his life or in her life? I need to say him, him or her. One day a week at church on Sunday don't make her a Christian either. Look at your neighbor and say, I know that's right. Some of the women are just as horrid, if not more, than the men. Don't write me no letters, don't send me no emails. 
Don't call me up. I'm talking to the the hood crowd at the 12 o'clock service. What do they do Monday through Saturday? Is there any evidence in their life Monday through Saturday that there's some level of a relationship with God? The psalmist says that you don't sit, you don't connect to, you don't get married, you don't stay in love with, you don't, you, you, you don't become too hooked to somebody who sits in the seat of being scornful at the things of God. So he says, watch where you walk, watch where you stand, watch where you sit. That's the principle. Be careful of where you go. Be careful of who you hang out with. That's the principle. Matter of fact, I think I need to allow you just a few moments to begin to write the names down on the other side of your, your, your notes, on the other side. Just begin to write the names of the people that you need to call when this service is over and say, it's over. I'm not hanging out with you anymore. Go ahead. Let me give you a few moments. It'll probably take you a little bit longer than I have to give you. But the reality of the fact is, the principle is, the man will be happy, the person, the woman will be happy, blessed by God, if they learn to watch who they hang out with. Here's what Amos says, two people can't walk together unless they agree. Here's what 2 Corinthians 6 says, come out from among them, that's what it says. You cannot move forward. Here's the bottom line. The people you hang out with are either influencing you or you are influencing them. And if they're not getting saved, then the chances are they are more so influencing you than you are influencing them. Amen. Praise the Lord. I got one person standing up. Thank you. I appreciate that, baby. Appreciate it. God bless you. Yeah, I know this is a tough, this is a tough pill to swallow. It's a tough thing to talk about because we love people. Y'all, and y'all, and people think that, hey, I love them and they my friend. We go way back. You got to make a decision. Do you want to keep hanging out with the people who go way back with you or do you want to hang out with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Do you want to hang out with the one who has the power and the ability to open up doors that no man can close? Do you want to hang out with the one who sees everything you do and everything you say and every place you go and everything you think and every word that comes out of your mouth? Because the problem is some of the people that you hang out with, you talk like them, act like them, you become one of them when you're around them because you want to be accepted by them. Go on and preach, pastor. And I'm just trying to tell you, you got to want Jesus more than you want them. He lays down the principle. Watch where you walk, watch where you stand, watch where you sit. But then he goes far further. That's the principle. He gives us the program. Point two, somebody says program. It's a very simple program. It's in verse two. It's point two and it's in verse two. Here's the program, here's how you carry it out. But his delight, verse two, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Oh, that's powerful right there. Here's the program, here's what he wants us to do. You gotta learn to delight in the law of the Lord. But his delight, his desire, he takes pleasure. That's what delight means. You take pleasure in the law of God. You, are, you take pleasure in his precepts and his concepts, his statutes. You get excited, you love, you delight yourself in it. You find joy in it. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Psalm says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart, Psalm 34. God wants us to get delight and get joy and get excitement out of his word. Now, now notice what he says, his delight is in the law of the Lord, the commands of God, the word of God, and he doesn't stop there, but he says, and in his law, he meditates day and night. He says, here's the person who's happy, it is the person, here's the person who's blessed because they have learned how to get delight in the Lord's word and they meditate, that person meditates on it day and night. Now, now listen here, this is worth, this is worth the price of admission right here. He uses the word meditate. You all think God should be happy because you read it. There's a difference between reading and meditating. Thank all 17 of y'all. 
Some of y'all feel good because you get up in the morning and you read that chapter and you think everything's fine. The Bible doesn't say blessed is the man who reads the word. Here's the thing that distinguishes the men from the boys, from the people who are going to get blessed versus those who don't, those who will be happy versus those who don't. He says he meditates on the law. That, that word meditate means to chew it over. It means to murmur, to ponder. It means to rethink it over again and again. It means to, you're talking about it underneath you, you. You're talking about it all day. It means you're murmuring it to yourself. And you know, it's nothing wrong with you talking to yourself. Some people talk to yourself. There's nothing wrong with talking to yourself. The only thing that's wrong with talking to yourself is when you ain't talking the right thing to yourself. Come on, talk to me for a second. Some people talk to themselves, but they don't say the right thing while they're talking to themselves. This verse here, this word here, meditate, means I'm murmuring God's truth to myself. I am pondering and I'm, I'm chewing it over again. That word meditate is a word that is, is derived to say you keep, you keep uh, 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 thinking about it over and over again and here's what I discovered about meditating on the word of God I, I will meditate on it and I'll draw some life out of it and I'll draw some strength out of it and after I've drawn some strength out of it I go back and read it again and I see something else that I haven't seen before and it speaks to me in yet another way and I draw something out of that I wish I had some people here who know what I was talking about to meditate on the same verse and get something more powerful out of it every Every time you meditate on it. You know, a cow has two stomachs. When he chews his first meal and eats it up, it goes into its stomach and it takes the nutrients out, then it passes from one stomach to the next. Two stomachs. Y'all better thank the Lord we don't have two stomachs. Your one stomach is drama enough as it is. Look at your neighbor. Then it passes to the next stomach where there's still the last few bits of nutrients squeezed out of that meal that that cow has just eaten and chewed. That's what this word means in the scripture. It means that we've chewed on it and, and, and meditate and pondered it and think it over and over again. And here's what the text says. It says you meditate on it. It says day and night. I looked up the word day. I wanted to find out what it meant. And day, I looked it up in the, it's a, a Hebrew word and it means daily, every day. It means I'm, I'm pondering it and I'm meditating on God's truth every day. This is the thing that distinguishes people who have such powerful, blessed lives from those who don't. This is the thing that makes a difference is the ability to know that this word right here has life and you meditate on it and you chew on it and you, you eat it and ponder it has a way of life. And the text says, not only does he meditate on it day, it also says he does it at night. I looked up the word night, and it didn't mean at night. Y'all supposed to say, what did it mean, Pastor? It means in the midst of adversity. It doesn't mean just at the night time, even though that's a good time. That word night means you're meditating on the word when things are going well and when things are not going well. It, it means you are chewing on it and putting hope in it and having confidence in it and holding fast to it even when things are not going the way you want them to go. God says, I'm going to make that person happy. Here's what I discovered, that God can give you joy even, see, see, I don't want y'all to think when I talk about the, the blessings and the favor and the blessings of God, God's blessing exceeds material blessings. I, here, here's what I'm trying to tell you. When God blesses you, it's, see, oh, y'all excuse me for a minute. So, somebody say, slow down, Pastor, you can take your time. It's not just talking about material blessings. It's not just about money. Because what I discovered is that God can bless you and give you things that money can't buy. Yeah. Woo! That's what I want. I want the kind of blessings that God can put in my life that money cannot buy. So he gives us the program. That's the program. 
meditate, delight in the word, the law of the Lord, and in that law, meditate, chew on it, drink it, think about it, ponder it, speak it to yourself day and night. When things are well and when they're not well, when the sun is shining and when the sun is not shining, meditate on it at all times. That is the program. You got the principle, you got the program. Here's number three, here's the promise. Somebody say there's a promise. I'm almost finished. Somebody say, go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead, Pastor. Now the promise is in verse three. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. This is a promise that's revealed to us through triology. Somebody say triology. It's the study of trees. Come on, it's a holla holla. Say triology. What is it? Blesses the man. And here's what he says. Here's the promise. He will be like a tree. Not a bush, not a limb, or a branch. He'll be like a tree. And look at what the tree is. The tree is planted. They need to talk about that because we got some unplanted people walking around here unstable when you're not planted you you unstable you all over the place unstable God will plant you God will put you in a place of stability I don't know about y'all I have been through enough in my life I could have lost my mind I should have had a nervous breakdown there's a whole bunch of people I should have cussed out but I'm planted I'm stable. And here's what I like about being planted, because he said he will plant, it's not just being planted, it's where he plants you. <laughs> he said, he shall plant you by the rivers of water. He said, I'm gonna always plant you in a place where there's always water nearby. <laughs> Somebody ought to hear me right now. Y'all can't hear what I'm saying to you. He said he's going to plant us. He will plant you by the rivers of water. I love that. That's powerful because I'm always going. And see, here's the thing about rivers of water. I always got something to nurture and feed myself on. While everybody else is dry, I always got some water nearby to, to draw from. I always got something to feed on. That's what God promises to do. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you today? He promises to do that. He will give us rivers, put us by rivers of water. We'll be like a tree planted by rivers of water. Hold up. That brings forth its fruit in its season. So, so number one, he's going to plant me. Somebody say plant. That's the promise. Secondly, in addition to the plant, he goes a step further. He's going to help me be productive. Somebody say productive. Look at your neighbor, say productive. He says, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, he says I, I, I'm going to bring forth its fruit in its season. I love that from God. In other words, he says, when your season is due, because you are a blessed person, you will have fruit when it's your season. Some of you have come to your season and there hasn't been any fruit. It's been dry. It's because you're not blessed. But when you're blessed, every time you come to your season, you're going to be blessed. Y'all miss it. That women over your head. Because some of y'all, it's been a long time since you've had a season. So you trouble because you've been going past all the seasons and you, you haven't had the thing. Here's what I learned. Let me just, I throw this in for free. I won't charge you anything extra for this. There's a season for, har for sowing and then there's a season for harvesting. There's a season to sow and a season to reap. There's a season to plant and a season to gather. The problem is we have people who come to the gathering season, the harvest season, and there's nothing there. That's because they didn't make the right choices during the sowing season. Here's what I learned. I learned, you know, when you plant, here's, here, here's the problem. We live in a culture and a generation that plants on Monday and expect to harvest by Friday. 
It don't happen like that. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters and after many days, it shall return to you. You plant a seed, it's not gonna come up. You don't stand there and watch it to see if it's gonna come up in the next few hours. Amen. You plant it, water it, and in due season, you come over here after many months, and here's something is sprouting out, coming out of the ground. The harvest is coming. We live in a culture that wants to harvest without the planting. They, they, wanna, they want the, the blessing, but they don't want the responsibility. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. They? They, they want the paycheck, but they don't want to come to work to get it. Y'all ain't hear me. They, they want a successful marriage, but they don't want to work on the marriage to make it work. It's the husband that wants some, but he don't want to treat his wife in a way beforehand. So when it comes time for something to happen, she feels like it, but he want to treat her like a dog and treat her bad and then come home at night and say, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying to you. I thought I'd have a thousand women up on their feet shouting and praising the Lord. Some of y'all are due for a due season. And I love this, the scripture says, if you do the right planting and the right sowing, you will always be productive. All right. And also, he says, not only will you productive, in the fact that when your due season is due, there will be something for you to do. <laughs> Did y'all catch that? Y'all missed that. Huh? When, due, when your due season is due, there will be something for you to do because there will be some harvest for you to gather together. And he also says, your leaf also shall not wither. Ooh, I love that right there. That means God will keep you fresh and alive. At all time. Hold up, he didn't stop right there. Here's also another promise. I'm almost finished. And whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. Somebody say prosperity. Are y'all noticing my peas under the promise? I got the planting, the production, the prosperity. And, and here's what the word prosperity means. Prosperity doesn't mean money. Let me be clear. When I say prosperity, I'm not talking about money. The word prosperity here in the Hebrew means to be pushed forward. I, I'm telling you today that we serve a God who has the capacity and the ability and the desire to push you forward. Oh, y'all missing a great spot to say amen. I am living my life right now being put in situations that I don't deserve to be there. I'm not qualified, I don't earn it, I haven't deserved it, but because of the blessings of God, he has pushed me forward. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God is about to push you forward, put you in a job you didn't earn, push you in a place you're not qualified for, open up doors and put you in meetings and take you before people and do miracles for you because he has pushed you forward. Somebody high five your neighbor and say, I'm ready to be pushed forward. High five them on the other side and say, I'm ready to be pushed forward. Y'all not getting it. Y'all need to get it. Pushed forward. Pushed forward. And when God pushes you forward, nobody can push you back. Nobody can hold you back. Nobody can stop you back. When God pushes you forward, Nobody can hold you back. Somebody give God up. Somebody raise their hand and say, God, I'm ready to be pushed forward. Somebody raise your hand and say, God, push me forward. Whatsoever he does, whatever he put his hands to, God will push you forward. Whatever he touches, whatever job you go to, whatever situation you're in, whatever committee you join, whatever surroundings you find yourself in, there's favor on you. Somebody say, favor ain't fair. I don't deserve it. I shouldn't be here. It don't belong to me. But something about that word that I meditate 
meditating day and night pushes me forward. All right, let me close with this. I wish I could stop there, but there's three more verses. And those three more verses talk about punishment. Somebody say, here's the punishment. The ungodly are not so, verse four, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Somebody say punishment. punishment. When the farmer gathers his wheat, he gathers the whole grain of wheat and put all of the wheat together in a sifter. He takes the sifter and shakes it because the agitating of the sifter separates the good part of the grain from the bad part of the grain. He shifts it. He takes that sifter and shakes it and then he tosses everything in the air and the wind blows the bad part of the grain away. Y'all missing a great spot. The ungodly are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Y'all, let me give this to you. Let me break it down to you. Some of you have been put in relationships with people who are not good for you. So God puts you into a shifter. You and your friends that you've been walking with, standing with, sitting with, that's giving you bad counsel and bad advice and bad suggestions, God puts you in a situation that the relationships gets shaken. Then he tosses it in the air and then he blows the bad people away out of your life. And you crying and complaining because the people are not your friends no more. Stop crying and complaining. The wind has blown them away. Come on. There goes that joker you don't need. There goes that sister you don't need. There goes that situation you don't need. There goes that drama. You don't need that drama. You don't need that pain. You don't need that agony. You don't need that advice. It's blown away. Stop trying to hold on to people that God is trying to blow out of your life. Don't call them back, don't tweet them, don't text them, don't email them, don't face page, Facebook, whatever, face. What is it? I can never get it right. Don't Facebook them. What else they do? Don't tweet, I said to tweet. Don't, inst don't Instagram them. Don't Snapchat them. Skype, Skype, Skype. Skype, don't Skype them. Don't FaceTime them. Don't Tango them. Don't Viper them. Don't What's at them. Don't nobody know what that is, whatever. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying to you? There's some people you've been walking with, standing with, sitting with, but God wants to blow them out of your life. When the shaking comes and it gets tossed in the air, let God blow them away. God blowing them away and you going down the road, picking them up, bringing them back into your life. Now it's time for him to go. God's trying to bless you. Somebody high five your neighbor and say he's trying to bless you. Hallelujah. Somebody need to give God praise. You wonder what happened? You wonder why it happened? Woo! I'm just trying to tell you God is trying to work some blessing in your life. And when he does it in your life, 
He will bless you beyond your wildest dreams. Somebody, look at your neighbor and say, you're about to be pushed forward. I like living this kind of life. I like living this kind of life. I'm living a blessed life. I like living this kind of life. I'm living a blessed True, I can tell my trouble to get away. God has given power to make my day. I'm no longer walking in sinking sand. I am steady resting in my father's hand. I'm blessed when I come and when I go. Every day I'm living, living in the overflow. I Living this kind of life. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm living up. Come on, say I like. I like Woo. Uh, I'm living. I'm living. Just one more time. I like. Oh yes, I do. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm living a blessed life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Give him a give him a shout. The blessed life is contingent on a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Embracing the fact that he died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose again from the dead. It starts with that. It starts with him being in charge of your life. Somebody needs to be saved today. You need forgiveness of all the wrong you've done. We serve a savior that has made provision for your sins to be forgiven. It's a, it's, it's a life that's contingent upon you walking with God. Somebody here today has drifted out of fellowship with him. He wants to have fellowship with you. He wants his fellowship renewed. You can get that straight today. Somebody who's not sure, you need to have assurance. Or you need a church home. This here is a good church. It's a great church for you to be a part of. You need a church. You need to be covered. So I want y'all to take a moment and talk to the people on both sides of you. Ask them questions. Are you saved? Are you walking with God? And be honest. And if they're not right, encourage them to make their way down here. Right now is the time to come and say yes to the Lord. Go ahead, talk to them. Challenge them. Get in their grill. Come right now, this is the time. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm living up blessed. Say this. So you can have a blessed life too. You can have a blessed life. 